Maybe I'm crazy, but I am legitimately hyped for a Tom Cruise movie. No, you're not. I am. You're not gonna. You're not gonna agree with the reason why I'm hyped for this movie. T might. Hey, we'll get to that later. <laughs> maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm not. Welcome to Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. I am Joy Taylor. We have Jeff Schwartz. The Schwartz is with us today. I'm Boom. Dying to make that joke. Boom. I, I'm gonna ask him if it's okay if I make that joke. He's he. I mean, he's seen that movie, right? Like, of course, he's seen Spaceballs. Yeah, he's heard that joke too. Has you're he heard that not, joke? Yeah, you're probably not the first one who's going. I tell might that be the joke. first one to make that joke. Maybe. With that hairstyle, yeah. The Schwartz. <laughs> yes. What was the princess's name in that movie? Anyway, Jeff Schwartz, former offensive lineman, brother of Mitchell Schwartz, who still plays for the Kansas City Chiefs, will join us today. Uh, princess Vespa. Vespa. Oh. The spoiled daughter of King Roland. I am the spoiled daughter of King Roland today. Um, anyway, that's actually funnier if you knew the conversation we were having before we <laughs> yeah, started recording. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to ask him lots of stuff about, uh, obviously, what's going on in the NFL. I don't know if he has any crazy offensive lineman stories and lots of other stuff. So he joins us today. We're also going to talk uh, 49ers, um, the cheating, the Cheatriots, <laughs> the Browns, <laughs> LeBron. I, I love Joe Burrow. I'm all in on Joe Burrow. Um, and there's a little nice story about Joe Burrow, too, that I'm going to mention that I actually didn't know about until today. And lots of Christmas stuff. Uh, shout out to the bird. If you don't know what yins means, it's it's how, like, instead of saying y'all, people in Pittsburgh say yins. That's why people don't really know him from Pittsburgh, because I don't say yins, because yins is a very, uh, it's, it, it's it's called Pittsburghese. And it's just a bunch of words that people in Pittsburgh use, and nobody else knows what they mean. Like, for example, what, what do you call uh, the thing that you would put around... The band that you would put around something to keep it in place. Like a rubber band? Yeah, but we call it a gum band. A gum band. What do you put your groceries in at the store? A bag, probably. No, 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 like to get around the store. Oh, a cart, probably. Yeah, that's a buggy. That's a buggy? Buggy. What do you call when the ground outside is a little bit wet? Like, you know. Do or? No, like like the actual ground is wet. You might, you know, you have to be careful how you walk. Slippery? Yeah, it's slippy. Slippy. You say Dantan. So... Pittsburgh is permanently in the 1920s. Uh, I, it's not even a. It's not even a, an era. It's just. I think we just choose to not use, like, to not pronounce every syllable in the word. So you know, if you're from Pittsburgh, you understand what I'm talking about. If not, I sound like a crazy person. But that's what it is. So that's what Yins means. Anyway, Merry Christmas. All right. Well, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Schwartz. All right, Jeff Schwartz is joining us. Really appreciate you coming in. Hey, I'm um, here. So I've always wanted to ask you. Yes. You so you and your brother have a book. Yes. Eat my Schwartz. And I'm a huge fan of Spaceballs. Yes. Have you ever heard that joke before? Uh, never. You haven't? I heard it every day, yes. Okay, dang. <laughs> the, the, the now Browns general manager, John Dorsey, yes. when he was in Kansas City with me, that's all he spoke to me. In Spaceballs terms? That's, he, spoke, he said, he said, um, he said, may the Schwartz be with you. Every day I ever saw him <laughs> for six months. That's all I got from him. He'd walk with his hands behind his back. He wore that kind of like that nondescript gray sweater thing right. he wears. Said Chiefs on it. And he just we made the shorts with you and just walked by me every time. And he thought it was hilarious so, every time. He, I'm sure he did, yeah. I wouldn't even answer him sometimes. I'd just be like, oh, there we go. Just for six months straight, it's all he did. <laughs> That's amazing. It's actually the most on-brand John Dorsey story right? you could ever And he had have. like that kind of smile on his face. Like He was super pumped that he said it to me. I wonder if he did it to my brother when he was there. I gotta ask him. Yeah, you do have to ask yeah. him, actually. Because I could see him using the exact same joke, unapologetically. Over and over again. So it you was didn't fantastic. want to like, remix it? No, that's what he said every to me every time. I really thought I was going to be the first one to tell you that joke. From Spaceballs? Yeah. I had not seen that movie till college, though. I didn't know that was a thing until I got to college. So people were making the joke, but you hadn't seen the movie? Yeah. Do you I, love the movie, or is it it's just good. super annoying because John I've, Dorsey wore it out? I don't think I've seen the movie from start to finish ever. I've seen, like, parts of it throughout. So I've seen the whole movie, like, completed. Right. But I've never sat down one time and watched the whole movie. Yeah, that's fair. Because that's one of those movies that's, like, it's so parody. <laughs> you kind of get it. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't really need to sit through it, but I do love that movie. Okay, well... You know, I need to get more creative, I guess. <laughs> Me and John Dorsey have the same sense of humor. I would not hit you with the same joke six months in a row, though. But I kind of am impressed that he did that. That's a lot of dedication. Um, so, so your brother still plays for the Chiefs. Yes. And they played in a, a tundra this weekend. Have you ever played in weather like that before? Once, actually, with the Chiefs. Oh, there he is. Look at that. Look at you guys. This oh, class cool. organization here. <laughs> um, that's a great picture. Yeah, he, he, had a ton, he had a ton of fun. I mean, that's that's like our dream. I grew up in Los Angeles. I grew up here. I did not see snow as a kid. Right. I went to Oregon. It snowed like once a year in Oregon and once a day. I mean, that's a ton of fun. I played in one game in 2013. We played the Redskins in Washington. We got this for the first half. So much fun. Snow was great. 
we got sleet the second half. Sleet is the worst. It's it was sleeting sideways. Now we won like forty eight to seven. So I sat the se- most of the second half. I had my jacket on. It was nice. But this is fun. Anything worse than this when it's colder, sleet is the worst. Okay, so this is still very cold though, yeah. and and the like the visibility is rough. <laughs> like so how so you said that you won what forty seven? We won like we beat them by we were up thirty eight seven at halftime. I think so. I don't know what the score ended up. Okay, being. and then like, this was a blowout too. Yeah. So normally, like we would think that these games, you'd have to run the ball yeah. the whole time. So, because I mean, you really can't, you can't see. So, how does it go that you can score, well, especially the way that they did? A couple things here. Um, it's not when it snows. It's not like terribly cold. I mean, it's like in the upper twenties. Right. Sleet. It's like zero degrees. I mean, it's like it's much colder. And it's terrible. The the thing about playing in snow and rain and whatnot, it, the wind is the biggest factor for a quarterback. The snow is pretty much fine. You saw with Pat also. It's hard to play defense in the snow. It's great for us offense alignment and great for skill. But you saw Terry Kill just running. They couldn't stop themselves on defense. And so I think that there's a common misconception that they're going to run the ball every play. A lot of these games go over because the passing is great if it's not that windy because defenders can't get their footing on the field. That's what happened in this game. So I wasn't surprised. Pat was was 27 of 34 for 340. I mean, it's just like – Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. It's incredible. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I was – I was, uh, I was – I was I don't miss playing, but I was jealous of this. Like I that would have been a lot of fun to play. Yeah, see, so for me, I don't I've never played football. Um obviously. I didn't didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, this is I wasn't built for it. But I'm the right in my family. <laughs> However, I've sat through many football games in the stands, not quite as enjoyable. So like last weekend I was watching my nephews play for the state championship in Daytona and it was like I want to say it's like 60 degrees or something, and I had a blanket on myself, like wrapped around. Yeah, that's. I don't get that. My wife's the same way. She sleeps with two down comforters. I don't get why. You run hot, I imagine? Yes, of yeah. course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am like your wife. I do not run hot. Uh, as you can see, T is sitting here with a blanket draped over her. It, I'm not cold, but I could lose like maybe like two degrees warmer in here. Um, I just don't want to be restricted by a jacket. <laughs> so the point is, I don't like sitting in the cold. Well, that that but would suck Chiefs for you. Fans show up no matter. That. There was an empty seat in that yeah. building. I went to the AFC Championship game last year in in Kansas City, and remember it was good. they were gonna have that polar vortex. It's right. supposed to be like negative two early in the week, and I went to Amazon. I bought like every thermal you could buy: snow pants, ski gear. Ended up only being like twelve degrees, um, and it was it's awful. Like it's not fun. But you're watching a football game, you're into it, you're cheering, um, you try to stay warm. I mean, I had gloves and thermals on and everything thermal, and you just suck it up. I mean, you only have eight home games a year, and if you get a playoff game, it's pretty awesome. So, and so I, mean, I think you could say as a fan, it's a cool experience to sit in a snow game. No? Maybe not well, for you. Well, I mean, I don't – look, I've, I'm I'm on the spoiled end of it. I've been to yes. a ton of games. Obviously, my brother played in Akron and went to every game he played in college. It looks very one. cold there. It's very – it's not – a Yeah. It's cold. It's very cold. I'm just, it's very, very cold. I give, I've have memories of sitting in the bathroom, which is not a place you want to like hang out. It's warm in there. But it is warm in there. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, okay. So it looks cool. But have you ever played in a game where it's like so cold that it's it's hard to actually play? Because um, you're talking about 12 degrees yeah. as if it's like a nice AC breeze. Yeah. See, here's the thing about the cold. It's not – the players that are playing, it's not really a problem because when we start playing, we're warm. Like, like in between drives. I mean, like in the drive, we're fine. Right. It's the in-between drives that suck where you're on the sidelines. So the heated benches get too hot. So you have this weird thing where, like, you, you might get burned if you sit on the bench. Like, your butt gets really, really hot. Or you stand up and get cold. Like, a weird – you have a weird dynamic there. Like, a lot, a lot of guys, if you look, they sit on multiple towels on the bench because they get, the heated benches get – it's like one temperature. It's, like, really hot or not on. <laughs> like, you don't have – there's no, like – there's, no there's no in-between. There's no in-between. No in-between. Um, and the, your warm-up sucks because you don't want to go out and warm up. And, like, everything else is awful. Right. And, like, for me, my hands will get really cold. And hitting someone with, with cold hands is not very – uh, yeah, that painful. Hurts. So I would put my hands in the warmer to get to get them warm again. I think the coldest game I played in was near zero. We played a game in Pittsburgh on a Thursday night that was about zero. Um, wow, look at you guys. That was a different team, but still, um, you guys are ready to go with this. Look at that. <laughs> we played. It was at the Panthers in 20, 2010. Um, it was about near like twelve zero with the wind chill. Um, I don't know. It's. Look, I grew up in Los Angeles. Like I'm used to this weather we have today. It's kind of fun for me to play in a game that wasn't normal yeah. weather. I mean, like, I think for people that grew up in the cold, it probably sucked to, to have more cold. But it was like, cool, okay, today's 10 degrees. Let's go have some fun. Yeah. Like, I, was okay I, I grew it. up in Pittsburgh, so I don't – to this day, I don't understand the, the architecture of Heinz Field. 
oh, it's like, very guys, cold. Yeah, there's, there's a the whole river. The wind is just... water off the river. Very cold, unpleasant. So you just wanted to leave this whole open space. Well, it's a great view. Here. You want to see that? You want to see the river? Yeah, and for like... like two months, and then it's I... then it's like a, it's a vortex of of ice wind. <laughs> I I love playing in Pittsburgh because the fans the fans love it. Like the fans are no. into it. Terrible the the towels and like I don't think I ever actually right behind you. won in Pittsburgh. So maybe it wasn't the best, but it was. I was like it's playing a, there. Yeah, it looks like a fun place to play. I mean, I've been to many games there. Of I actually had a, a grown man about your size uh, turn around and get in my face and tell me to shut the f- up at a Pittsburgh game. Steeler oh, fan. What, it's that type of podcast. I wasn't aware. Okay. Oh yeah, sorry. Good to know. Um, I was, no, no, I, no I, 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 don't, I'm fine with me. I'm not a. Okay, now I know. Okay, um, we can get a little. Yeah. We get a little, uh, we get a little loose around here. Okay. Good um, to know. Yeah, and then I shamed him because I'm a little manipulator. And I, it was my fault. Like, I was being obnoxious. My brother was playing for the Jets at the time, and yeah. I'm from Pittsburgh, so I just took advantage of the situation and was very obnoxious. Um, and the man in front of me didn't appreciate it. He apologized later because I were was you like, sitting oh, in, I'm so small. Were you How sitting in you your Steelers? But you were sitting in Steelers' probably section, right? With the Jets? Like, you were um, sitting like... I mean, pretty much everywhere in Heinz Field is the Steelers' section. But my brother had a great game, and he, <laughs> he strip-sacked... Uh, I don't know if he strip-sacked Ben Roethlisberger or he, he, he sacked him for a safety... But he had some huge play on Roethlisberger, and from that point on, I was insufferable, um, which which is exactly how I was this weekend in my nephew's game. Well, I wasn't that bad, but um, yeah, Pittsburgh's a, Pittsburgh's a fun place. Okay, so your your brother's still playing for the Chiefs. Yes. Um, I picked the Chiefs to go to the Super Bowl this year. I'm starting to feel a little bit better about it now, Ooh. but <laughs> what do you feel is the Chiefs? biggest uh issue right now because they're playing great yeah but the beginning of the season it was a little it was a little sketchy there for a little bit i think the health of mahomes obviously that's the number one but number two is their offense stalls out a bunch in games so like they'll have some games where they obviously score a bunch of points but even if you look at the last two weeks they scored three in the first quarter against new england 17 in the second quarter and three in the second half right even this last week they only had one touch on the second half so they have these lulls on offense, and part of it is they don't run the ball terribly well, and they haven't been very good in the red zone lately. If they fix those things, they have an opportunity to be to make to make the Super Bowl, I think. Um, but the rush defense against the Ravens might be an issue if they play them. And their rush defense is not good right now, um, but their pass defense might be the best Andy Reid has had. I never thought this was the year of the Chiefs. Even all, I picked the Patriots to start the season. I think next year is the Chiefs' year. I thought last year everything went about perfect. It just went perfect, and this year. Typically, we see like this in the NFL. The Patriots are the only team that ever just go up all the time. And so I just felt like if you look, it's just been, they've had a weird year. Injuries and weird plays on the field, and this is not going right. I think next year, when you add more pieces to the defense, and you're basically your whole team's back, the, next year is my year, I think, for the Chiefs. I think they, I wouldn't be surprised if they made the Super Bowl this year, but the Ravens are, the Ravens are good. Yeah, they're unbelievable. <laughs> they're, they're really good. My other pick for the Super Bowl was the Cowboys. Tim here. I had Cowboys Patriots. <laughs> You picked Cowboys Patriots? Yes. So I bet on it too. I make a lot of money if this happens. I will I'm I'm just being a, a, a company man because we have, you know, Fox has the Super Bowl oh, yeah. and the Cowboys Chiefs would be unbelievable ratings. Like and, and it would be super fun week to just right. talk about and you know, the Cowboys would be amazing. But the big thing with the Cowboys, I think, is when we, every time we talk about the Cowboys, we're always talking about their offensive line, how great the offensive line is. Like it's, it's all through the offensive line, it's Zeke, it's the offensive line. Is the offensive line for the Cowboys as good as we oh, yeah. think they are, or is that just like a narrative that's carried on for a couple of years? Oh no, they're very good. Oh yeah, um, having Travis Frederick—that's Zach Martin. But having Travis Frederick back at center has been maybe the biggest addition to any team this year. He missed all last year. Um, him being back—I mean, look—you have Tyron Smith at left tackle, who's right. going to be probably a Hall of Famer. You have the left guards were kind of rotating. Then you have Frederick, who's been one of the best in his position. Zach Martin right there, who is all pro every year at right guard. Then Lyle Collins, who's playing really well at right tackle this year. They're really good. And the problem with the Cowboys, and this is what, what is most upsetting, is the game we saw against the Rams is what we expected all year. It's what me and you expected. Like that's what we that's what I thought I was getting this year. So why aren't they doing that? And it's coaching. Like they're just not they're not ready to play. I mean, like I, look, I know this is something really silly, but like Dak Prescott not being able to say defer, like and then hearing Demarcus Lawrence say like, "Well, I changed it like while we were up there, I decided that I wanted the ball instead of kicking." Like it was something where like they wanted the ball, but then Demarcus Lawrence said he wanted to the ball and defense. It just was like like that's that's coaching, right? right? Jason Garrett should have told him, guys, we win the toss, defer. End of story. But they're up there just doing whatever, and it's like it's it's a little. It's, I don't really blame Dak because he got confused, obviously. But like, that just falls to this guy. No one else is having those problems. Why can't everyone? Everyone can figure out how to say defer or what to do. <laughs> 
Like it's not a problem. <laughs> like, are, is, are, are the Patriots not going to say defer anymore? No, but the Patriots will will have they'll have cheated, so they'll know. Oh, what's oh here we go. No, yeah. we'll talk about that in a second. Um, <laughs> I here's, I don't know. I just it's that kid, guy's fault. Okay, right there. It probably is Jason Garrett's fault, and not just Jason Garrett's fault. I think you gotta you know you gotta say something about Kellen Moore, right? So I the thing with Kellen Moore is I, a couple of things I, I'm not quite sure. So they, the first three weeks of the year were great on offense. I wrote about it. I got super hyped. I'm like, my pick's going to be right. Yeah, me too. And then they just turned into like a different offense, I felt like. But if you look at their efficiency numbers, they're top five in the NFL. Like, they're, they're efficient offense. So why aren't they scoring points? Like, why aren't they they gaining the ball in the end zone? They're, they're just, there's just weird things happening where you can't really figure out. And I think what happened was, I wrote this. I think it's I think it's really true. I bet Jason Garrett was tired of like Kellen Moore getting the props and went in there and like said like run different stuff. Like I, I I think that's silly to say, but like I don't know why the offense would change. Yeah. Like I I I think that either he said like hey we're gonna be more conservative or we're gonna do this and that, but why would the offense? But there's a drastic change from the first couple weeks where we were like yeah like, Cowboys are unbelievable. But the schedule's part of it too. They played Dolphins, Giants, yeah. Redskins, which maybe and this is one year where I think we've not. Taking into account a lot of scheduling, like the Bills, for example, have easy, like we've a lot of teams that we don't count schedule this year as much as we have in the past. I think, but I think it just falls down to him, man. I mean, he's how does your team look so bad for twelve weeks and come up and do the Rams game? So hypothetically, they fire Jason Garrett at the end of the season. Who could you see taking that job? Because there's a lot of big names being thrown out there. <laughs> He'll take it, and that yeah, I mean that's the only name that matters. Yeah. Like to me, that's the problem. I very much admire Jerry Jones as a businessman. Um, I think he's great with his players. He obviously runs an unbelievable franchise as far as you know profitability yeah. and all that. Like first class, everything. But if you're not named Jones, <laughs> do you really feel empowered to go in there and say what you need to say? And like to me, the most successful people delegate to yeah. other successful people. And they're okay with look. It's not. It's not on me. Like I'm the owner at the end of the day. Right. Who cares? Like I don't. I don't know Spurs owner. Who cares who Spurs owner is? Like we don't really hear from Bob Kraft. Right. I mean, we know Bob Kraft because they have six championships. But like Steelers owners aren't out there. Like yeah. there's. There's just. I think we've probably normalized Jerry Jones. It's not normal. Yeah, you're 100 percent correct. And the thing about a new coach is that if you're a new coach, how much do you want to see control to him, to Jerry Jones? Like if you're Urban Meyer, everyone says Urban Meyer. Reminds like giving away control of Jerry Jones. He's going to run the ship like he did at Ohio State, and, yeah, and that's would, the thing is like he? is like you have to have a coach, and this is why I think Jason Garrett has made it for so long in Dallas, is because when things go poorly, you blame Jason Garrett. When things go well, you you give him the praise, and like that's what he loves. Are you I, you know are you tell me he's going to stop doing press conference after the game? No, of course not. This is he. I feel like some some owners got into this to like make money and win a championship and just kind of be behind the scenes. To your point. I think he got in this to be the Cowboys owner and be forward facing. And this is his baby. And the reason why he wins is because of him and whatnot. And they look, they've drafted well, they've developed players well, but you got to get a coach in there. I don't even know who the coach would be. I mean, everyone says Urban Meyer, Lincoln Riley. I don't see it. They, they... Yeah, I just don't see it because to me, like there's people talking about Ron Rivera. I don't just, it, Ron I just doesn't don't think, fit. I, don't I just think don't think it fits. matters who, who I, coaches there because. It's it's not going to be their organization, and, yeah. and it's kind of like what's happening with you mentioned John Dorsey. It's kind of what's happening with the Browns. Like I don't believe you should hire someone who you can just control. Like right. there's a relationship that yeah. needs to exist there between the GM and the coach. And in any sport, when there's an imbalance of power in a situation where it can't it can't work, like. We were talking to Orlando Skandrick last year, yeah. and he was like, "No, Cowboys are great. Like, you can go straight to the owner." I'm like, "That's not a that's good, not good thing. thing." Yeah, that's not good. It's not a good thing. Can I throw a grenade in this conversation real of quick? You because can. what about what if what if a, a pairing of Josh McDaniels and Tom Brady to Dallas next year? Yeah. So Colin threw that out there. I th I want to say this last week, and I love it. We, it and um, yeah. I like to watch the world burn. And that would be because if you look at like Tom Brady, there's a good chance I think he does leave. Um, you know, he looks around at his team. He's like, "Where are my weapons? Like, wh where are my guys? Like, every year I take less money. Um, like, wh where's my weapon? Like, where are you reinvesting that money? You just let Trent Brown walk. You've let scouting, and, and, I believe, like, is like, where they spend it. <laughs> <laughs> that story, by the way, is way too overblown. Um, <laughs> like, you never replaced Gronk. Like, you knew he yeah. was retiring. You never like so. Where's all this money being spent? Go to Dallas. I know Jerry's in the way, but you have pieces there. You have Amari Cooper. I mean, assume you re-sign Amari Cooper. You have a great offensive line. You have Zeke. You have uh, linebackers and pass rushers. And just add Tom Brady. 
and Josh McDaniels and maybe got a winner. So they'd win in spite of Jerry, basically. I think those two can maybe convince Jerry to back off. Like if Tom went to Jerry, it's like, look, Jerry, you can do your press conferences after the game, but let me and Josh run the thing. Like, like let me do it. You think for one year or two years he'd stay away? Eventually he couldn't do it. Yeah, like, I mean, like long term he would he would he would break. But if but they I win th- a championship I, next year, or the year after, it'd be worth it. To and Jerry. I think that's all that Jerry wants, really. It's not that I think Jerry is doing this with malintent. I just think that the the result of what he does is not good for the team. Okay, so Agreed. the Patriots situation. I I'll just keep it real. I don't care because it, this is whatever. They this is what they do, and I just can't <laughs> continue to get outraged or something. Yeah, you know he. He's, yeah. he's got his pictures there. He's ready to go. He wore an amazing outfit to his press conference today. By the way, it was um, he wore like he wore like uh, he took his sweatpants and rolled them up to like his calf. He was wearing long white socks, like Air Monarchs, I think, and a hoodie. And it was just like he just walked in like all grumpy to his press conference. Um, he's a, he's a magnificent grump. My my thing with with these type of stories is a why. Okay, the why. So right. Spygate made sense because they were signaling stuff in, and you could record that signal and then match up with the tape and maybe get an edge. Okay. They don't do that anymore. There's radio communication now. So the why of this does not make sense. Why would you risk it all for the Bengals? Why would you do it in the press box? I guess the idea is, you know, that you commit a crime out in open, it's easier to do, it's more brazen. And and I come back to maybe this idea. They just like cheating. Like, they, they like pushing the edge. And it's like, they just like that feeling of, like, pushing the edge and trying to get a tiny bit more of information. So it's just the thrill? I, I guess. I don't know. Why would they do this? There's no reason so to do that's, this. that's kind of where I am. Like, f- first of all, like, we're banging on the Bengals. Like, we're giving it real, though. Nobody needs to cheat to beat the Bengals, and certainly not the Patriots. But if they're doing this with every team and they just happen to get caught doing it with the Bengals, but, that's one thing. But they but I have, I don't they haven't been credentialed for any other game for this for this crew to like do this type of thing. Like this is the first game they've been credentialed for this idea of this show. And the thing about it too is like you could just have someone in the stands with a camera with one of these things and just record it from the stands. Like you don't have to do this whole like this it's, whole It's it, kind it, of it's so I'm kind of with you. Like it's so much that it's like you'd have to be completely either on like just brazenly not caring yeah. or completely and utterly incompetent. Which is possible but too. But <laughs> that is it, it's, NFL, it's, but... it's fair. All right. It's yeah. not it's not out of the realm of possibility. However, for me, I just feel like not even just the Patriots. Like, I don't think any team after the stain that Spygate has had on the Patriots. And I'm sure what Belichick, you know, is thinking about his legacy and yeah. how he's going to be remembered at this point is would be worth it to do that. But I just don't think that Belichick had anything to do with it. And not to protect Belichick. I, listen, I've uh, suffered at the hands of Belichick for many 20 years. OK, Dolphins and Steelers fan. I have no love loss for Belichick, but I respect their winning. For me, I just feel like this is what the Patriots do. They always just just push it like a little bit further. Yeah. And maybe they just got caught, but it, I just can't. I can't fake outrage over it. I just can't. What if the videographer just decided, you know, I'm gonna shoot some B-roll, whatever? They might, I might get something on film. I'll just hand it to Belichick or someone else. Like, I, maybe I get something. Like, I don't. Maybe just you know, so I, went rogue. To, to your thing, like, I don't think Belichick is sitting in his office preparing, you know, for like, you know, they're preparing for the who they play the week before the Bengals, whoever it was, right? Preparing for the Chiefs, and he's right. like, hey guys, guys. Go get someone to record the Bengals like two weeks from now. Like I don't think he's doing that. Okay. I just I can't believe that either. Right. Like he's not doing that. So he's so focused on that week. And again, I think there's a lot of misreporting of what actually happened on the sidelines. They're not signaling plays anymore. There's no signaling adjustments. I watched the film. There's no one's looking at the sidelines for stuff. That's all overblown. I don't know what they were looking for. It seemed like a waste of time when they got caught. They're, they're getting fined. They're going to suspend. I mean, I mean should... the, the rules were broken, so they are going to get fined. They deserve They'll probably that. lose a draft pick, but I, I don't know. I, I think I'm with you. <laughs> Um, okay, so another offensive line question. Yes. So obviously the Cowboys uh, kicked the Rams' ass this week, and I don't really know what to make of the Rams from one week to the next. I, I, I think it all rides on Todd Gurley and how he plays, yeah. but I, I don't. I just think that it was the offensive line for the Rams this year. Like I don't think that Sean yeah. McVay is like some non genius and <laughs> Jared Goff can't play football. Like I just, I just think that the yeah. offensive line struggled, and Todd Gurley needs a good offensive line. That's a big part of it, but I also think that McVay did not realize they were struggling. So uh, it's getting a little nerdy here. So the, the Rams ran a lot of they run a lot of zone, right? So a lot of it's lateral movement down the line of scrimmage. They want to take their guy laterally. And you have to be very strong to block someone one on one to be able to stretch that guy down the field because obviously the defender's also strong too, right? right? And so when they started getting weaker on the interior offensive line, they're getting pushed back too far. And when you get pushed back too far, it messes up the timing of your zone runs and guys can run down from behind. That was that was happening for 10 weeks, and they just never adjusted till the Bears game was the first time they changed their rushing to kind of 
build double teams in and go more up the field. And it's easier when you watch my hands do it. Um, and <laughs> and like they, so I think McVay did not realize the change needed to be made till too late. But again, in, in twenty, if you're not the Ravens, you cannot rely on your run game. I think to win your games anymore. I mean, the Ravens are so unique in the way they do it. And you know, eventually, you know, everyone says well, maybe they get figured out. But if they win a Super Bowl this year, who cares if they get figured right. out? You you got to rely on Goff. I mean, Goff has to be number one. But you set up play action pass because you run the football. The threat of running the football is what helps them in the situation. And I think Goff is just not a great drop back passer. And they get situations when they can't run the football in third and long and just ends up being terrible. I don't think he's not a genius anymore, but the best coaches are able to adjust and adapt. He hasn't done that yet. And that kind of worries me. What did you think of uh, the exit from Oakland's? Um, felt very fitting. Um, that place is a dump. I mean, they had to leave. It's, it's a bad place, but it just but felt. Like why? So I, just, unfortunately. I. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, uh, I unfortunately had ne- never got a chance to go to the Coliseum, but obviously I've heard you missed out many, many stories. Yes, I do feel like I missed out because uh, that's, low key, a, that's one reason to go, by the way. The Raiderettes are awesome. Yeah, they're one of the top in the NFL. Um, yeah, I guess I love- not anymore. Maybe I don't know what they're doing in Vegas. Well, I mean, I'm sure the Vegas Raiderettes are going to be <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> Vegas has very good looking women. Um, those tryouts are going to be probably documented. Anyway, I just feel like. Oakland deserved better. They did. Their fans um, are passionate. They love their team. They've been with their team forever now. They already went through one move, right, when they went to L.A. and came back. And they, they, that's why they booed after the game. They threw nachos on the field. I mean, they did all that stuff because they're they're up 16-3 to the Jaguars and lost. Yeah, it's it just bad. felt, and if you read a bunch of people that cover the team in the Bay Area, they all said this was the most fitting ending, right? The most losses in 25. I think them and the Browns are somewhere near the most losses the last 25 years. You know, no real success. Uh, and then they had a Super Bowl. They win a Super Bowl. They went to Super Bowl in one of those years. Um, they went, right? They didn't win the Super Bowl. Um, otherwise, it's nothing. Andy Reid has owned the division the last, you know, eight, seven years or whatnot. Just felt that that place it needs to go. That place is a dump. Like, you couldn't, if you went to see your brother play, you could not wear his jersey in the stadium. Like, you have to go in, like, plain clothed and then put it on when you get, like, into your seat. Like, my parents would go, you know, Chiefs games. And they would go with a regular shirt on and then take it off and put a Chiefs shirt on. When they got to their seats. Into their seats, yeah. Yeah, my mom would – so I would have had to have an issue. My my, my mother is uh, like me. Kind of, you know, we just don't really care. And, yeah, but, you know, and so she would not only wear a Dolphins jersey, it would be, like, down to her knees, white. In Oakland? No, she never went okay. to Oakland. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, she's she, – listen, we've gotten into a lot of, a lot of yeah. shit with fans. And it would say mom on the back. Yeah, I don't so know. So she's just basically but, a giant light bulb. But, from, in the but, from, of but from the front, though, it doesn't say mom. I mean, I could see people yelling at her, like, and you know, I'm sure she could dish it back, but still, I don't, I don't, it, it's, that place is. No, I wouldn't have, I, this is what I'm saying. We would have had an argument because she'd have been like, yeah. I'm fine. She probably would have been fine because she's just. How does she I like know. your impression of her? Oh, that's exactly what she does. Okay. I mean, that's exactly, yeah, she just, she'll, she'll love it because that's exactly what she does. And she's a Cowboys fan, too. Um, all right, so final question. Obviously, offensive linemen, you guys are, are big guys. We've had Mark Schlereth on before. His nickname is Stink, so he has endless stories. But um, part of the reason why I've never wanted to be a reporter is, no offense, but locker rooms are disgusting places. And they have a constant smell. Like, yeah. even when they're clean in the offseason, clean. In the off season, like there's no one in there, it's like a nice, just kind of here. The smell just sits like right there. Yeah. The, the white jerseys do not do any, any good either. Yeah, white's not white's not the most slimming color. No. But listen, you gotta you gotta have a lot of a lot of muscle. That was the last know? game of a two and fourteen season right there. Oh well, yikes. so bad memories. Yeah. Yikes. Um, I but, threw my helmet after this game. Well, uh, not did, on the sidelines. I was so angry at our quarterback. What he happened? screwed me. With Jimmy Clausen, and he had a. It was bad that year. Um, he it was like fourth down. And we had a quick protection. I blocked my guy for like four seconds, and my guy like eventually like kind of got off of me. And Jimmy hadn't thrown the ball yet, and he's supposed to throw the ball two seconds ago. And Jimmy just like ran into my guy for a sack, and then like, but my guy, I think it was probably Babino. He like took him by like the neck and like threw him backwards. <laughs> And I was like, we were down, we lost the game like 37 to 7. I took my helmet on the I just threw it. I was like, I'm over this guy. I just can't do it anymore. Um, yeah, good memory. So, 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 <laughs> so, you're, so you're saying that we stink? Um, no, 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 I'm not saying that. Listen, my brother is smelly too. He's, he's attributed to, that, to that, uh, that smell. I'm just saying with stink being Mark Schlereth, he had like some crazy, unbelievable stories about like locker room mayhem. Do you have any that like popped to mind? Mayhem? 
Yeah, just like guys, like I've heard of guys like, this is so I mean, we, like we, I've heard of guys like taking razors out of like the, like the Ick Man sticker like box and like reusing them. Oh, gross stuff like that. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, we've had guys like, okay, so I'll tell you a story. I'm not so, saying that you stink. No, no, no. <laughs> But like you know, it's this is a lot of nakedness. Um, uh, our old owner in Carolina, Jerry Richardson, um, was very professional. Like he wanted very subtle. He wanted you to come shake his hand no matter what. Like right. you could get up and shake. Like if he walked in here, he said all of you to get up and shake his hand. That was like what his his thing was. And so I saw him coming down our locker room after practice. I think it was, and I'm like, I don't want to. I, I, so I I try to get all, all my stuff off and run like across the hallway to get to the bathroom. But he met me halfway, and I didn't have a towel on. So I was naked in the middle of the locker room, shaking our owner's hand, <laughs> and I saw like our tight end over there, like get, like just busting up laughing. He's like, "Hey, how you doing, Jeff? I'm doing good, sir. Uh, just uh, yeah, good practice today. Like just just totally like just." So you were out. trying to avoid him, and you just yeah, I ran, I, 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 like I ended up like take all my stuff off and I like, turn around and he like I tried to beat him across and he meet me in the way. I mean, look, there were pranks and. Not like stinky stuff. I mean, it wasn't like a lot of that gross stuff happening. Uh, I feel like that's way its way out of the NFL a little bit. I mean, there were guys that would go to the bathroom in like the hot tub. I'm like, <gasps> like really, like you guys, like really, why would you do that? Like we're all in here. We all know we're in here. Like why would you, like why in would the you do- hot tub? Yeah, yeah. It's such a small confined space. It's like exactly a breeding ground for ickiness. Exactly. Already. Like- yes. We had a guy do that like once or twice. I've seen that happen. Um, Number one, of course. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, thought, I thought it was understood. You know, that was like, I'm not gonna lie. The first, I thought, the first said I thought, it, it was. I thought, I thought like, it was understood ah. that it was gonna be number one only. Um, so no, nothing, nothing terribly gross. Well, if you think of any gross stories, we love gross I'll stories. I'll tweet you so guys. Next time, yeah, or yeah. Next, you know, next time yeah. you come on. But thank you so much for joining yeah, us. Really appreciate it. It was fun, and um, may the Schwartz be with you. <laughs> <laughs> you already always say that. I love it. Quit it. Come on. Quit it. Quit it. What? Quit it. We about to turn up in this bitch. So before we get to where to quit it, I didn't get to discuss my weekend. So I went to Daytona to see my nephews, Mason and Isaiah, play for St. Thomas Aquinas in the state championship in Florida. And my brother coaches D-Line and is assistant to the coordinator for them. And it was insane. And it was the most stressful night of my life. And I was obnoxious and loud. And it's the only way to be at a football game. So I don't know if anyone had a problem with it. I don't apologize. But also, it's always fun to like, I haven't been in the stands in a while. So it's always fun to like hear the game plan of the like people in the stands. So it's like five minutes of like, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, coach, run the ball. Then like yeah. a quarter later, like, why are we throwing the ball? Throw the ball, throw the ball. It's like, yeah. Yeah. there's only yeah. like a certain amount of options in this sport here that like we can all. work with. And I'm pretty sure they've thought of both of those options right down there right. in the field. But it's like, for me, I don't I don't get involved in like the telling anyone what to do thing. It's just like I'm just like making noise and yelling yeah, and being supportive, whatever. Yeah, and yelling at refs, of course. But there wasn't too many bad calls. Although there were four calls on one of the extra point kicks, so I was like, if there's one more, I think we all rush the field. Yeah, why? What could the what could the call be on an extra? It point? was like false start, and then like it was it was a lot uh, offsides whatever. and false start. It was, it was ridiculous, but it was a great game, and they won interception on the last play of the game it was like Boom. the most nervous I've ever been in my life but congrats guys it was a great game congrats to St. Thomas the running back for Edgewater is unbelievable by the way um but they're going to nationals and I'm very proud of them and I love you guys all right what is what it or quit it hello uh come get me come get me that's what the Browns players were saying <laughs> of course in, including Jarvis Landry uh were reportedly yelling towards the Cardinal sideline in Arizona on Sunday this aligns with a previous report from Jay Glazer, our very own, a.k.a. King of Scoops, uh, that OBJ has been telling other teams the same thing. Joy, the Browns will be the worst team of the next decade as well. Wit it or quit it? Wit it. Um, yes, if you haven't heard, Browns, you are the officially the worst franchise of um, this last decade. So congrats. It's a huge accomplishment. Parade. They'll definitely make a parade for that. Couldn't have happened to another franchise, literally, because it's <laughs> a huge gap between the next uh, team, which I don't even know who they are, because it doesn't matter. If you're not first, you're last, and that's the situation. <laughs> and they're last. Um, they are going to continue in this trends, and you know, I I feel that everyone should leave all their you know bad habits, energies, you know, um, and such in 2019. 
But the Browns are going to carry this over into 2020 because their issues aren't on the field. They're in the front office and they're cultural. You can't go a decade of terrible because you got the head coach wrong because you haven't had the same head coach for a whole decade. So many head coaches. You've had like six, I think more actually. Probably, Probably more. more. Yeah. I don't have it in front of me, but I'm going to guess more. I'm going to take the over on that one. Yeah, the fair. point is... Their current roster is probably their most talented roster in the decade. And the best they can go is 8-8. Eight and eight. They'll end up finishing 7-9 and nine because they play the Ravens and the Bengals. And let's be honest, 7-9 and nine is trash when you take a look at this roster and the expectations that came into this season. It's inexcusable. Freddie Kitchens isn't the right guy for the job. There's reports that they want to keep him. And I'm not saying this because I want to see Freddie Kitchens fired. I don't have any personal feelings about it. It's just very obvious Baker Mayfield has regressed – the numbers point to that. They're not a good football team. They're completely dysfunctional. And we're going to get another year of this mess if they continue trending in this direction and they don't change anything. So after Sunday's loss, as you mentioned, there was players allegedly yelling to the Arizona sidelines to come get me. Come Jarvis get me. Landry hey, was arguing. <laughs> come get me. I don't think that's how it sounded. But well, I couldn't if I did it at any – if I. Went any further with I mean, I just that impression, I would have been on. Yeah, you're fine. Thank Ma- you. I, I, I don't – maybe <laughs> – That was me. Well, I, was I there a possible – was possible like a confusion? Like they're saying come get me like in a – like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like come yeah. at me Like way? come see me? Yeah, like see me. I don't know. This could come have been a language – this could be a language barrier issue just like that coin flip, you know? I don't know what happened. But Jarvis Lanchy was arguing with Freddie Kitchens on the sideline. That was very obvious. And it was like legit arguing. It wasn't like one of those healthy sideline arguments. It was like, yeah, that's good. In the heat of battle, like this was it's, this was a disaster. And I don't blame Freddie because he wasn't qualified for this position. And rarely when you skip steps in life are you successful unless you have a strong, solid group of people around you who haven't skipped steps who can help you get over the things that you don't know how to do, or you're in a great cultural atmosphere, neither of which are available in Cleveland. So unfortunately for Freddie Kitchens, this is this is what he's dealing with. There, there's What's the solution? Unfortunately, you have to move on from Freddie because he's, he's not the guy, and this season was a disaster and a huge disappointment. The owner and Dorsey have to calm down. And hire a qualified, proven head coach and let them build the organization from the ground up with the intention of winning and consistency and culture and an environment that encourages people to do their best. For example, Kareem Hunt said that everyone wasn't giving 110%. Do you have something better to do? And that, to me, is not – that's not on the players. Like, that's the environment in Cleveland. That's what's going on. As Jarvis Landry so eloquently put it, it's contagious. They have no identity. That's facts. And most importantly, they made me a liar, which I don't appreciate. I defended Baker, okay? I, I, I advocated for Baker, Man. and I picked them to make the playoffs. We were, and I don't like when you make me a liar because we ba- I'm not. We were the Baker Mayfield show record, and he just let us down, I, huh? I – I may I had Donnie take time out of his life to cut down a video of me praising Baker Mayfield. Had Donnie won't get that time back and neither will I. Nope. Or the listeners. That video exists. Okay? Yeah, exactly. And again, I don't blame Baker. I don't blame Freddie. It's it's a qualification thing. It's a, it's a cultural thing. It's neither one of their faults. And that's just facts. Like we've seen people get into situations they may not necessarily be ready or qualified for. Like I'm a process person. All right. Not the Philadelphia 76ers process, but like the process. Yeah. Okay. There's steps that you have to take in life. And the reason for those steps is so that you're prepared for the next step. Right. So you know how to do what you're going to be required to do 10 steps down the road. Like everyone wants to get out of college and then go straight into whatever, like the top of their career. Like there's a reason why you work your way up. So you know when you're at the top what the person that's coming in at the bottom does so that you can guide them in the proper way. All right, I don't think I'm explaining anything revolutionary here. There's levels, there's here. levels to this. There's levels to this shit, and it, levels were skipped. <laughs> and this yeah. is what happens. Yep. And it's not Freddie's fault because he should take that job. I would take that job. I would not take that job. I would not take. I would not take a job as an NFL head coach. That is a lie. But first woman, if I'm, first female NFL head coach. No, that's the reason why I wouldn't take that job because I'm not going <laughs> to fail everyone that comes after me. I'm in a little bit different position than Freddie Kitchens. Yeah. Other people 
other men will be hired. <laughs> okay? yeah, so yeah. that's not the same thing. <laughs> Freddie, of course, should take that job. It's not his fault. All right, what's next? Uh, all right. The Patriots grab their ninth win against teams who don't have a winning record, all while the league investigates New England after more scoopage from the big homie Jay Glazer revealed a wild interaction between Bengals security and the most stereotypical Bostonian photographer ever. Take a listen. I don't see the advanced scout in this footage. No, it's not. We were trying to get some field perspective. It's my bad. That's not the no. field. I'm the end. I don't know why you would think you could take that. I didn't know. But I can delete this right here for you. Damage is done, my friend. No, it isn't, because we deleted it. Joy, the Patriots deserve a meaningful punishment. Quit it or quit it. And I don't mean fines or, you know, a draft pick. What, like death penalty to the program? <laughs> nah, just like, you, you gotta sit down. Belichick, what? Belichick gotta suspend, sit down. Doesn't suspend Belichick? Just for a game? Never. Okay. That's not happening. Um, so quit it then. Jay huh? Glazer's on fire. Yeah, he is. Shout out, Jay. Come on the podcast anytime you want. Please. Um, yes, I would it. Of course they need to be punished. Here's the thing. When you're in a repeat offender, you can't pull that I didn't know line. There, you actually only get – that's a it's a great line, but yep. you can only do it at the beginning, the first time you get caught with something. I didn't I, know. Oh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> well, if, and that's one of those things like you better make sure who you're using that line with. Because if they know you knew, because you know people be on the receipt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Per my last email, <laughs> yeah, you did know. <laughs> okay, so you gotta be careful when and where and with who right. you use that line with. But for the most part, it's a decent lie. Okay, you didn't know. But the problem is, and Colin put it eloquently: when you're a genius, you really can't use that line. Yeah, right. Okay, you can't be the all-knowing yep. uh, Wizard of Oz and then also be like, "Yeah, I just didn't know the rules." And they knew the rules, and I don't care how far down the line this employee is, like separated from Belichick. It's institutional what happens with the Patriots. The tone is set at the top. Do your job. Men, exactly. Many people think of the Patriots as elitist. Well, there you go. Like, it's <laughs> kind of what happens. People think that they can just do whatever they want. Now, I believe that Belichick didn't know about this, and I really think it was for a dumb docu-series that only Pats fans are going to watch. But as I told, said last week, I just don't care. Because, unfortunately, it, it, it's just, it just doesn't matter. They're going to get fined. They're going to lose a, a, a draft pick, which, by the way, eh, take a look at the Patriots drafts. It, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> like, right. It's yeah. not really it's not really a huge loss for them. They don't draft well anyway. So... Look, did they cheat? Yes. The rules were broken. And whether Belichick knew about it or not, whether it really was for this advanced scout situation or not, the video always makes things heightened, right? Like, in my mind, that's what happened. So when I saw the video, like, the audio of it is just kind of funny because it's like, no. Like, yeah, it, right, like it's the yeah. most... It's the most oh, quintessential getting audio, caught doing something guy. thing. And, like, again, I don't think that that guy was trying to cheat. But I just don't – I don't I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. It just doesn't matter to me because, like, they're going to get fined and they're going to lose a draft pick and they're still going to be Belichick and they're still going to be the Patriots. The one thing I will say about it because everyone was losing their minds that I'm not outraged at this cheating thing because, like, hello, what – I don't know what world everyone lives in, but I, like I just like to function in a reality. Okay, know thine enemy. All right, and sometimes people do mess up stuff. Yep, and they still win. And you're not that's just how you're not trying. that's it's a saying that how it goes use. sometimes. Often. Yeah, that's used every day. But for me, this is your choice. Like you have a choice in life. Do I respect Tom Brady? Is he the greatest quarterback of all time? Yes. Does his legacy have a couple? things on Deflated it. Deflated balls in it, yeah. Yes, it does. Does Bill Belichick the greatest pro football coach of all time? I think so, yes. Probably. Probably a matter of preference for some people, but I think so, yes. Does his resume have some things on it? Absolutely. You look at Drew Brees last night. I think Drew Brees should absolutely be in the conversation for one of the greatest of all time. Is he Tom Brady? I don't think so, no. But Drew Brees' resume is impeccable. Right. So it's just... How do you want to be remembered? I'm going to still remember Tom Brady's the greatest of all time. I'm just be like, yeah, you know, there's some stuff that's like a little shady. It's not going to change my opinion about whether he's still the greatest quarterback of all time and Bill Belichick is still the greatest NFL coach of all time. And I'm going to remember that security guard in Cincinnati for being a great American.
Thank you. He was on it, boy. Yeah. He knew those He's rules, like, nah, too. Like, nah. I don't think so, dog. Nah, fam. Oh, you're just going to delete it totally oh, just on this camera right here? No, damn oh, you don't have a computer? He oh. laughed at yeah. him. He <laughs> laughed at his face. Damn, it's just done, my friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know who you air zapped that to. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. LeBron is petty. I'm on to you, LeBron. For the most part, I have ended most of my pettiness about LeBron. For a long time, I was very bitter. I was a bitter woman, which no one wants to be around. And it's no way to live. It's true. I mean, we all know that girl. Okay, but I've moved past it, all right? It took a long time, but the heat are good again. So I, I've, I'm willing to forgive, and I'm living my best life. However, LeBron had a quote this week about load management. And, and he kind of said this a couple of weeks ago, or like a month or so ago, and it was irritating then. And it, it, it's really starting to, to get on my nerves. So he was asked about load management, and he said, if I'm healthy, I play. This was after the Lakers' victory over the Hawks. He said, I mean, that should be the approach, unless we're getting to like late in the season and we've clinched and we can't get any better or any worse. It could, I could benefit from that, or it could benefit from that, but why wouldn't I play if I'm healthy? It doesn't make any sense to me personally. LeBron. I mean, obviously, I'm going to put that on the Spurs starting this because Popovich was like the original one to do this and actually get fined and have the conversation. But it's the Spurs. So we went back to our normal lives as soon as that happens. However, LeBron has been doing this. And whether he was a technically completely healthy when he was sitting or not, uh, if my memory serves me, this was an outrage not that long ago. The only difference was we didn't have a name for it, load management. Okay, it's it's really not that deep. It's the same thing you were doing before. And I get it. It's a battle for L.A. and like the Lakers are playing amazing. So you can't poke any holes in what the Lakers are doing. And Kawhi is doing the load management thing and everything's kind of simmered down with all the Clippers hype because of it. But just please stop. All right. It's it's first of all, I don't even like the idea that LeBron is talking about it. Aside from the fact that we already went through this with him and people were outraged because they were I mean, people were making signs like I traveled 10,000 miles across mountains and rivers to see LeBron play. And he's not here. I didn't fit all that on the poster. But like this was a whole thing. So let's not pretend like it didn't happen. This, this is a very eye rolling quote to me. And it's not a reflection on what LeBron's doing this season. They're having a great season. I'm happy for the Lakers. It's nice that there's no drama. Everyone's playing great. Awesome. But just, mm, no. Like, I, I didn't forget that this was whole, a whole controversy with LeBron not that long ago. I don't think anybody did. So this quote just has no value to me. And also, who is really judging if Kawhi is hurt or not? We already went through this with Kawhi. That's why he's doing load management in the first place. It's why he's no longer with the Spurs. Only one person can tell you whether Kawhi is healthy or not. That's Kawhi Leonard. No one else on earth is capable of saying that. Now, I understand that this was a deal that they had last year, but he was recovering from an injury. Who's to say he's not still recovering from injury? Injuries aren't all physical. Some of it is mental as well. I'm just saying stop talking about it, LeBron. I, it's incredibly hypocritical, and for the most part, LeBron has been without flaw over the past six months, okay? And it's, it's, it's great, and I love it. I just got to point out that this this was a controversy that you had on you not too long ago. So let's just keep it real for five seconds. Just five. Or like to the two-minute rant that I just went on. All right, Donnie. Let's do high-key, low-key. Let's do it. High-key, Drew Brees is the only one who should be compared to Brady. Low-key, you said this years ago. Yes, I did. I don't know if it was like years ago, but I definitely said this before. <laughs> and Drew Brees obviously had an incredible night last night. So his final stat line was 29 of 30. He's bothered that it wasn't 30 of 30. Uh, 307 passing yards, four passing touchdowns, zero interceptions, 148.9 passer rating. His 96.7 completion percentage is a new single-game NFL record with a minimum of 25 passing attempts. And obviously, he passed Peyton Manning, um, 541 passing touchdowns uh, for the all-time record. He done that, he's done that with, with 69 different receivers. It's insane. Here's a list of the um, – two pages – of the <laughs> – records that Drew Brees holds um if you will humor me uh most games with 300 plus passing yards most games with 400 passing plus passing yards most touchdown passes in a single game most consecutive games with at least one touchdown pass most consecutive home games with at least one one touchdown pass most seasons with 500 5,000 passing yards 5,000 plus passing yards most consecutive games with 20 plus completions he has like every record imaginable I'm out of breath so I'm not going to finish it but the point is I love Aaron Rodgers all right he's he's very uh he's very spunky all right, he's got, he's got a little attitude to him. I like it. I like the Packers a lot more than most people like the Packers this year because of Aaron Rodgers. But the reality is, while Aaron Rodgers does have a Super Bowl and a regular season MVP, 
Drew Brees is the one who should really be compared to Tom Brady. And I don't like comparing Tom Brady to really anyone, but Drew Brees, and it's kind of interesting because this whole conversation, like you were having with Jeff Schwartz and that everyone's having right now about the Patriots and whether they're cheating and, you know, should there be an asterisk by, you know, their accomplishments, which I don't think that there should be. But Drew Brees is such an incredible NFL legend. I just love Drew Brees. Like everything that Drew Brees does is class. He's like an incredible family guy. He represents everything that New Orleans is. Mm -hmm. He's woven through the fabric of that community. He loves that city. They're an incredible organization and an example of what you can do when you actually build an organization because no one remembers this, but the Saints were actually the Browns for like the longest time. Nobody wanted to go play there. It wasn't a place you wanted to be. It was like the last like straw for your career to be in New Orleans. And now it's a place everyone wants to play. Everyone loves the Saints. I can't, like, I don't even think I've ever met anyone who's like, oh, I just hate the Saints. People in Atlanta, but that, okay. that, that's it. And that's fair, all right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like, that's it, <laughs> right. okay? And, and also, other than probably Saints fans, I don't know anyone who hates the Fal Falcons either. Like, it's just right. not organizations that inspire polarization and hate. Mm -hmm. And the way that Drew Brees has conducted his entire career, very similar to Tom Brady and being doubted and drafted low and just all of the things that he's had to overcome throughout his career to have all these records and play the way that he has. And look, no, he doesn't have six Super Bowls, but he very well could win another one this year. Yeah. I think that he should be in the conversation with the greatest of all times. He should be in that conversation with Montana and Brady. And I, I was super happy for him. And it's, it's fun to watch. And, and like Brady will probably end up passing this record because he's only like two touchdowns behind him. But it was a great moment last night. I loved it. It was kind of an interesting weekend for like moments with Oakland and Eli and Breeze. It's, it's like a lot of legacy stuff. It's but like send off season. It's, yeah, he's so close to perfection, though. Th I know, that, but that that's hurts. so quintessential <laughs> Drew Breeze to like have the most amazing night of your life and be like, I was one pass. <laughs> that's what greatness is. Yeah, man. All right, uh, high key. You are all in on Joe Burrow. Low key, you're gonna have to watch some Bengals games next year. Uh, Probably. I don't know if I'm that in on Joe Burrow. <laughs> Look, I made it pretty clear. I, I'm in on Joe Burrow. I'm looking forward to LSU winning the championship, and I'm sad that I'm probably going to have to watch the Bungles next year. Uh, my one grand hope is the Dolphins have, like, 35 draft picks. So maybe they'll make a little trade C and <laughs> sneak up. Because the Bengals are going to have the number one overall pick. Like, they could they could finish this season strong. They've got the Dolphins next and the Browns, I think. Um, I th if they were to win those two games, that like I think it's a toss up. It would be very bungles of them to mm -hmm. win those two games. But my guess is they try really hard not to win those games. <laughs> yeah, that should be the plan because they shouldn't. And but my my one hope is that the Dolphins could maybe make a like if they're not if the Bengals aren't sold, which Boomer Sison has already given him a helmet, so I'm pretty sure <laughs> that they are sold on Joe Burrow. But maybe the Dolphins could make a move, give them a few extra picks. Uh, they need a couple of players there in, uh, in Cincinnati, and maybe they can move up and get him. But, and I don't want to hear about how he couldn't beat out Haskins. Hmm. I, I just, please, please shut up. The point is, he just won the Heisman Trophy this weekend at a, in a record fashion, like blew out every Heisman voting record ever. And I loved his speech. And I just want to say something nice about Joe Burrow because this is kind of a cool thing that I came across on the internet today. So obviously he made a nice speech and he was talking about Coach O, but he also said in his speech, he comes from Southeast Ohio. It's a very impoverished area and the poverty rate is almost two times the national average. He said, there's so many people there that don't have a lot and I'm here for all those kids in Athens and Athens County that go home to not a lot of food on the table, hungry after school, you guys can be up here too. And in the days since his Heisman speech, people have started fundraisers for Athens County, um, like food centers or whatever. And they've raised over $200,000 because of his speech. So dope. It is dope. And I would really like to see him in Miami. But also, like, <laughs> here's the thing about it, right? So some people are not sure about Joe Burrow or whatever. Like, that's fine. Like, we don't know what any of these quarterbacks are going to end up being when they get to the league. And like the fact that he does have other NFL talent around him, like, does Tua not have NFL talent around him? And when he gets drafted, he's going to have NFL talent right, around him Right, but, well. like, but, <laughs> right, right, exactly. But but the, the point is, like, okay, he has all the support. Like, Tua has support. Trevor Lawrence 
has support. It's not like we're like talking about him compared to these other quarterbacks who are coming out of nowhere. It, it, it's like let's just have a little perspective here. Like, let's not get crazy. I think it's good. I think I, I the one thing about it will be where he goes. Like, I don't know if he goes to Cincinnati if he's going to have the career that I think he would have. Even if yes, I know I'm being a little biased. The Dolphins play better than the Bengals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like they do. They're just in a better situation right now than the Bengals are. And that's also shown by their record. But anyway, you know, I'll probably end up with the Bengals and I'll have to watch them. All right. Time for losers? Time for losers. Let's do it. Loser power rankings. Loser power rankings. These are the losers, the losers of the week. Oh, God. All right. First up, Mark Davis. <laughs> it kind of hurts to look it's, at this. Yeah. His stylistic choices. This suit is very, it, it's a very Miami Vice look, actually. I don't like it. You do? You are into it? The haircut's kind of weird, but it's <laughs> Just a little bit. It's out there, but it kind of works. It does work because he's got it's, he, he sticks with it. So mm -hmm. it's his look. He owns it. But I didn't like what he had to say. So I, I'm I'm hurt for Oakland. I legitimately am hurt. I don't like when the NFL moves teams. And because it, it sucks for the city. It sucks for those fans. Like people that have paid a lot of money and invested a lot of time and energy in these teams. And I wish the NFL would just find a way to fix the stadiums where they are rather than having to relocate them. But there's a lot of politics and stuff that goes into this. I understand. However, for Oakland, it just sucks. And that's one of those fan bases that I have a lot of respect for and a mm -hmm. brand that I have a lot of respect for. And it sucked the way that they lost this weekend. Even though, you know, it was fitting, it's still like, I'm like, just get this win for them. Like, it's the Jags. Like, ah. Yeah. Menjo! <laughs> anyway, they're... 54 and 88 since Mark Davis took over the team after the great Al Davis passed. And he was asked, you know, whether there was any nostalgia uh, knowing that this is it in Oakland. And his response was, no. I went through this in 1982 and no. It's like muster up a shred of sympathy, <laughs> like yeah. empathy for the situation that these fans are in. I didn't like it. And maybe he just wasn't thinking all the way through about like what was being asked of him. But I just feel like every answer or to every question about what it's like to leave Oakland should just be draped in like sadness that they're not going to be there anymore. Um, all right, who's next? The San Francisco 49ers. Sticking in the Bay. Not a good weekend for the Bay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I got to keep it real. <clears throat> I got to keep it real, T, about your 49ers. But... That was some way to lose. So I, the Falcons are playing tough. I respect it. But now they're a fifth seed because the NFC is insane right now. And they, a lot can happen over the next two games. They, they play the Seahawks too. So that's going to be a big determining factor in where they end up in the playoff seeding. But that first touchdown was a catch. I'm very surprised they called that back. But first touchdown was a catch. And the second one definitely broke the plane. Right. The thing was, though, I'm like, ah, I could just see – them just like screwing the Falcons in this spot because it was so close. I'm like, uh, yeah. I think they're just gonna give it to the 49ers. <laughs> and like, I want to be mad at the Falcons, but also it's like, you know, as the 49ers, like they like matter more this year. But it was it was a good. The, I like the way the Falcons are playing, and I gotta be honest, it's just something. And maybe this is gonna come back to bite me, but I gotta say it because it's just how I feel. There's just something I'm not completely in love with with the 49ers. I don't know what it is, but I can't quite put my finger on it. But you know, it's just like. <sighs> Is it that it this success is too quick to it like it feels like this is a, a very fast turnaround. I forget what their record was last year. But well, they didn't have Jimmy G, so it's like I don't want to react too much to that because that was a conversation. Like they're going to improve greatly, obviously, because they didn't have Jimmy G. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know what it is actually. Like I don't. I don't know what I can. What I'm looking for to put my finger on. I think maybe it's just my gut that when they get into the big moment in the playoffs, if they're up against somebody like Drew Brees mm -hmm. or. Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson. I'm going to have to lean on the experience in that spot. Yeah. You know what I mean? So to me, like, that's more, I think, why I'm doubting it is like, while they're a great team at the very top, they're still a little inexperienced. Right. So that's, I guess, maybe what my reservation is. All right, what's next? Last up is last minute Christmas shopping. Yeah, I'm going to take an L on this one. Same. That's going to be me. I'm going to be this guy in the Kent State <laughs> shirt. I almost went to Kent State, actually. They recruited me for, uh, track and field there that looks like my nightmare and that's gonna be me this weekend because i have a ton of gifts that i still have to get that i did not take care of and you know all those hours wasted on instagram scrolling through nonsense <laughs> i could have just been getting my shopping done but yeah good luck to myself and anyone else that has, do you have to go do you have to do some shopping i do i haven't even started me either. yeah i got <laughs> nothing for nobody you got nothing for nobody <laughs> yeah, john no. you didn't either no i 
I finished last night. Oh, good. Oh, See, that's man, a, there you're you done. go. That's a good man, Jeremy. <laughs> okay, so you started at least. I started. You okay, started. Okay. okay, okay. You two are crazy. Um, no, I have almost everything done. It's more like people locally that I need to get stuff for that I haven't gotten. But it's just I, I, I love Christmas time. But Christmas shopping, like I'm getting anxiety looking at these pictures. These, this is like this guy staring. Look at him staring. <laughs> oh, staring McStairster. That is a staring McStairster. Oh, that's creepy. By the way, if you're a starer, please stop. <laughs> Okay, I've had multiple conversations with people over the past couple of weeks. I'm like, I keep running into people that are starry. I'm like, me too. Uh, Stop yeah. it, you too. What? Yeah, so same. creepy. Stop staring at people. I was at the airport the other day, and this man was just in my face, like just stare. Like he was in my face. I'm like, can I help you? Like uh, in my face. What? See, it's, Hello. It's weird that he met you back with the stare because I feel but like he was the tall, stare. So I like he was so <laughs> tall. Like I'm a short person anyway, but like he was so tall, he made he made it seem like he was on my level. That's how starey he was. Mm, it's weird. Stop staring, you. That is a starer. Uh, and he's still doing it. Ah, he's still looking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, T, what's in the culture report today? All right, so the new trailer for Top Gun Maverick starring Tom Cruise will hit theaters June 26, 2020. You said earlier that you were hyped. Yes, because I watched the trailer, and there's a lot of good man bodies yeah. in this trailer. Oh, yes. Okay, this is going to be a lot of shirtless men. Uh, <laughs> ladies, I did the research, and it is confirmed they did work out for this movie. Yes. And uh, look, Tom Cruise movies are, for the most part, always entertaining. So, I mean, like, I, you know, Mission Impossible is like, I know it's going to happen, but uh, I'm still going to watch. For some reason, Colin Coward adores Mission Impossible. I can't go that far because I know it's going to happen. Um, like, for example, in this movie, uh, someone's going to die. It's going to be sad. Um, but I also knew that because it was in the trailer. But um, Jay Ellis. Love Jay Ellis. Yes, me love too. Jay Ellis. Uh, Jay Ellis. Miles Teller looks um, good AF in this movie. Um, Glenn Powell, also a cutie. Jennifer Connelly, who I love. Um, Ed Harris, obviously, legendary, Val Kilmer, John Hamm, and, you know, Tom Cruise. So it's, it's good. See, told you. Yeah, there's a lot of good people. And, yeah. this, and this is a remake to the sequel, the 1986 sequel. So yeah. it's it going to be, really there's going to be a lot of good, good 80s songs, um, a little romance, <laughs> um, some sweaty men. I'm in. Um, I'm in two right, souls. All right, so. Everyone's favorite Christmas song, well, at least mine, All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey, hit number one on the top 100 25 years later. That's a that's a crazy that that's, that's the first time. Yeah. How is that possible? I, I think it's because they ha they um they stream all genres because when I looked it up, I saw that um this is actually the second um holiday song to hit 100, like to hit number 1 on the 100 Billboard. Mm -hmm. And the first one was the Chipmunk song. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was that was that was the first one. That was like back in like the 80s right 60s maybe it's but. just cra it's just crazy that that's like the first time but did yeah. you see her on billy on the street i did <gasps> yes <laughs> i love it i love mariah i love billy too <laughs> yeah i mean the yes i agree like yes. mariah is in a category where she can just do whatever it is she wants you know what i realized mariah can do whatever she wants when she uh cribs oh yeah cribs she I was, was like oh mariah just does whatever she wants in the bathtub yeah yeah she just yeah I don't want anyone seeing me in the bathtub. Why? I mean, just the whole world? Okay. That's, just, that's what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, I love Mariah. All right, what's next? All right. So Legends of the Hidden Temple gets a reboot for adults and is set to premiere April 2020. I am so excited. Oh but my I heard gosh. it was like in an actual jungle. Is that correct? Oh, I didn't hear that. I, uh, well, I didn't hear if it's in an actual jungle, but Maybe I do. Maybe I read that wrong on Barstool Sports. Post. But that could, you could be right. <laughs> <laughs> what I heard is that they're um, so pretty much the same concept. You fight for the silver monkey. I'm hoping that the blue barracuda and purple parrot t-shirts are definitely uh, coming back. Listen, this um, was <laughs> so. If you are a kid and you grew up watching, so if you're if you're pretty young right now, you you didn't get this experience. Yeah, and uh, I'm sad for you because for you. Uh, let's be honest, our generation of television shows annihilates today's children's shows. It's not even comparable, even though some of them were mildly inappropriate, but this show like shaped my childhood. Like I needed to win the show. It just it, it entranced you in adventure. You knew you were better than anyone on this show. <laughs> <laughs> this and American Gladiators, you're like, I could do this. That. Yeah. Put it on the show. Like, look at this. It's, yeah, this is just, amazing. It was yeah, I'm so I'm very excited. I don't know how I feel about adults doing it. 
Like, well, I think for me, it's, it's almost like they were they were saying they're they're going after us millennials. So I feel like that I actually um, have a chance at to being be, to, on, so I can live out my dream. Yes, I'm and here I'll for that. And I'll probably be bad, which will be disappointing. I just want to meet the talking Amic. Um, that that's all I want. Like <laughs> my life will be complete. Yes. I just want to meet him. <laughs> um, I'm ex I'm I'm hyped for this. Did we find out if it's an actual jungle? I heard it was an actual jungle too. Yes. Okay, well, we'll confirm and let you know later. Yeah, but yeah, I'm excited. I am too. Um, I did want to mention that no host was announced, and I'm I'm kind of disappointed. Yeah, like we're available. <laughs> um, I volunteers tribute. <laughs> you do have to pay me though. They <laughs> did. Um, they did say that. So it's not on Netflix. It's not on Hulu. But it's on. It's you can only stream it. And I heard it's on this. It's on Quibi. I don't even know what. That, oh, I've heard of Quibi. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Everything is streamed now. That's just that's how it goes. Netflix. We have to get another streaming service. But we're going to do it because yeah. we want to watch Slugs in the Oh, Temple, seriously. And that's how they get us. I'm here for you it. You know, they're like, cut the cord, except for now you're going to pay for 45 streaming services. So you're going to pay more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ABC announced the live recreation of Good Times for the second live in front of a studio audience special that will premiere tomorrow at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So Viola Davis going to be Florida. You got Andre Bauer as James Evans, Tiffany Haddish, Jarell um, Jarell Jerome. Uh, Jay Farrell, Krim Fox. I mean, this is a great cast. It is a great cast. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, and I love Viola. Obviously, I love Tiffany and um, Andre. I love Jarrell. Uh, uh... No, the show, the show, the show. Oh, uh, how do you get away with murder? No, no, For... that Andre's on. Oh, Brooklyn. Um... Um... Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh, I haven't seen that. What? No. He's so good on it. It's so <laughs> funny. Have you seen it? Yeah, it's good. such a great show. Yeah, you have to check it out. He's amazing on it. No, I'm and Jay Fair obviously too. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm excited for this. It's awesome. Yeah. It's and then I found out Camp Anthony Anderson and Patti LaBelle they'll perform the theme song during the special. So yeah, I thought that I love that. Yeah, this is gonna be lit. Yeah, I'm excited for this. All right, thanks for joining us on the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. Thanks to Jeff Schwartz for stopping by. That was fun. Make sure that you check us out on YouTube, iHeartMedia app, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And uh, do, do we do we get an update on the? Yeah, I'm gonna tell you who's in the championship the, right the now. Championship rounds of the fantasy football league. We're playing for fifth place, so that's fun. Oh, delightful. Yeah, that's nice. Loser round. Yeah. Is there uh, anything worse than fifth place? Like fourth place sixth? is even still no. I don't know. I think fifth place is the worst place to be. Like first through third is obviously respectable. Yeah. Fourth is like kind of no man's land, and sixth is like okay, but fifth I think is the worst place to be. Yeah, it's not even honorable mention. That's yeah. Tough. Uh, our fantasy Super Bowl is between the squad with five hey. Bs. Uh, Mike, he was six and seven during the regular season, really turned it around wow. in the playoffs. Uh, and Le Rouge Grudens. Uh, which I believe is uh, French for Red Gruden. Uh, that's that's Martin. Uh, he was nine and four in our league leader. Okay, so, so they're playing, and we'll update you, and then one of those people will get a prize. Yeah, which we totally know what it is. It's uh, totally already made, and so Martin wrapped. and Martin and Mike. Martin and Mike, congrats on the championship rounds. Um, way to pull through to the very ends. We did not. Heller, one of us will win uh, the loser round. Probably be Heller because I'll probably forget to set my lineup because it's only important for bragging rights. If you're not room. fifth, you're... If you're not fifth, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's fifth source. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining us this week, and we'll catch you next week with a special Christmas episode of bum, Maybe bum, I'm Crazy bum. podcast. Yes. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm not. Ooh.